While we all waited for Tatsuki Fushimaru to start the second part of Chainsaw Man, he surprised us all by revealing that he was actually working on a one-shot, unrelated to Chainsaw Man, and with 140 pages, almost a full volume of manga. And today, we're going to take a look at this short story. So, hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Crash, and Look Back was probably the best one-shot I've ever read. The only other one that I can think that I can rival is the original Kono Katashi or Silent Voice one-shot, which is probably still the best version of that story, even if I love the series and the movie in their own right. Look Back, however, does one thing that I don't think many one-shots actually do, which is to deliver a fulfilling and completed story in a short amount of time. So let's go through that story and discuss my opinion and what I think are the main themes of each section. There will be spoilers all over this video as I go bit by bit through what happens, so I'd ask you to go over to Manga Plus and read everything for free if you haven't yet. We are first introduced to our main character, Fujino, in elementary school, as she is praised for her 4 comma manga in the school's newspaper. And if you think Fujino sounds too much like Fujimoto, well, that's most definitely on purpose, because the other character we are introduced is one Kiyomoto. Now, Kiyomoto doesn't appear for most of the first segment, but it's still her actions that drive the narrative, as she starts to draw for the newspaper as well, and she draws like a pro already. Versus Fujino, who's just pretty good for an elementary student. The other students quickly point this out to Fujino, and that drives her to actually start prioritizing drawing to try to improve and be better than Kiyomoto. This is where we are kind of introduced to the first meaning of Look Back, which, by the way, is the actual title, even in Japanese, as we spend a lot of time, as we do again and again throughout the entire manga, just looking at Fujino's back as she sits in her desk and draws and draws. Though, what I think is the main question in this entire manga is, why do you draw? Fujino is introduced to the manga saying that he just did the 4 comma in 5 minutes, that she really doesn't want to be a mangaka, much preferring following career in sports. And while we're going to see that that is not completely true, it does seem like she's doing it mostly because it's an easy way to get praise and look good. She's doing it for the fame and glory, or at least the closest that she can get in elementary school. But when Kimoto's work gets into the scene, Fujino is forced to decide if she wants to put in that extra effort to become better or not. And she takes the decision to do so, having now a second reason to work hard and to draw. Competition. Having a rival or someone you just want to beat is very often a good motivator and definitely was for Fujino, at least at first. Fujino does improve in the next few years a lot, but at the cost of her friendship and grades, and all that to still not be on pair with Kimoto's art. So she decides to give up. It is until graduation day, when she decides to go to Kimoto's house to give her the diploma. And at first Kimoto doesn't leave the room, but that changes when Fujino draws a strip and drops it under the door. Kimura runs to her and admits that she is a big fan of Fujino's work, having read every manga that was published in the newspaper since 3rd grade, and this helps motivate Fujino to go back at drawing. And if we can stop here for a second, what I find interesting is that this can kind of be an objective versus subjective argument, or even about the value of manga compared to pieces of art like paintings. Kimura was objectively the best artist of the two. There's no one in the entire planet that will look at the two side by side and say that Fujino was a better artist. But that didn't invalidate Fujino's manga. It still has value to some people, in this case Kyomoto, and Fujino still had a strong point. While Kyomoto was the best at drawing backgrounds, Fujino was undoubtedly the best at drawing manga. And by doing that, she helped Kyomoto, and this is what mangaka do. Draw their stories through their heart, they help people like me and you through hard moments by providing us with entertainment. And it's in realizing this value, that there's someone out there that enjoys her stuff on a deeper level, that really appreciates everything she worked for, that she gains a completely new drive to draw. But this time, she's not alone. Kimoto helps Fujino to draw a manga to submit to the magazine, and they even get an award. Most of this next segment is just showing and establishing this new friendship, as the duo continues to work together to deliver more one-shots. It's done mostly with sound panels, and it does such a great job. At this point, we are seeing multiple shots of Fujino's back for the second time in the manga, but while the first was just Fujino alone, this one has two people. And it's not just that shot, we got multiple shots of Fujino and Kyomoto, although sometimes just Fujino, having fun going to the cinema, the aquarium, the bookstore, we get this feeling that Fujino met someone that truly completes her. Not just in the manga department, but in life. And again, this is done in such an effective way in such a short amount of time. But then they get accepted to the serialization. Which is great, but Kyomaro doesn't want that to herself. She wants to become her own artist. She wants to improve and she wants to join an art school. That's a dream, not to have a manga serialization. And that's fair, because going back to their origins, it was always Fujino that drew manga. Kimura drew landscapes and backgrounds, so it 
makes sense that she wants to follow her own career. Fujino tries to change her mind, point out essentially that all the reasons why Kimoto's more antisocial and reserved behaviors may end up causing her problems, and why everything would be easier if she just followed along. But Kimoto wants to be herself, and wants to improve herself in order to be a better artist. And so we go back to Fujino's Lonely Back. We see that she publishes what essentially is a spoof of both Fire Punch and Chainsaw Man, Fujimoto's two serializations, in one. Also, a note here is that she keeps her pen name, which has Kyo in it, which is most likely from Kyomoto. And she gets 12 volumes in, but then an instant changes everything. An ex murderer got into Kyomoto's school and killed 10 students, including. well, I suppose you can guess who. This dramatic event causes Fujino to go into a hiatus due to her mental health. And let's stop here, as I think this mentions a couple of events. First one is kinda obvious in retrospect, but I'll be honest that it was other people that have pointed me out to it, which is the connections with the Kiyowani incident, which if you don't know was an arson that happened in July 18, 2019 in Kyoto Animations or Kiyowani Studio in which 33 people got killed. The suspect was someone who had his novel submitted and rejected by Kiyowani years before, but thought that Kiwana was ripping it off, when in truth, after people looked into it, they found that the novel that was submitted had little to no resemblance with any of Kimoto's productions. In Look Back, the murderer is also screaming to Kiyomoto that she stole his art before trying to hit her with his pickaxe. Besides this, there's a Kiyo in Kiyomoto that sounds too in the nose, but this is also the guy called Fujimoto who calls his two main characters Fujino and Kiyomoto, so yeah, I think it's on the nose on purpose. And there's also the fact that this came out on July 18, 2021, exactly two years after the incident. Except technically, it did not. It came out on the 19 in Japan, we're just a couple hours later than them. Still, it is undeniable that it's still very, very close. The other element, though, is the hiatus, which is a topic that has been hot lately, so to speak, for a couple of reasons, both the death of Miura and the recent hiatus of JJK due to Gege's health. And I did a full video on that topic when we got the news of Miura's passing that you can check out if you haven't, but essentially, I just don't think we're giving the mangaka the treatment they deserve as human beings, which in the end they are. And this comes in both ways. I don't think the industry is giving them that respect and treatment, and I don't think the audience is as well. And I'm sure this isn't what Fujimoto is going for, Fujino goes on here just because she lost her will to draw, and she's going to have to find a reason to continue, which is again the main theme of the entire manga. But either way, I still feel like it was something worth bringing up. Which is cool, but now, oh, now we're getting to the weird part. Fujino goes to Kyomoto's house and finds a strip comic she originally drew that made Kyomoto leave her house and she feels incredibly guilty for having put Kyomoto into the path that would eventually lead to her death. She rips the paper and we get treated into an alternate timeline in which Kyomoto didn't leave her house. Now, I kinda expected this to go to some specific ways to go to one or two classic messages, like for example, we'd see that it wouldn't change a thing and Kimura would still die, or even if she didn't, she wouldn't be as happy as she was with Fujino, and the point would be that it was still important for Kimura to have that experience. And while that message technically is still here, it's not how this segment happens, which just helps remind me that you shouldn't try to predict Fujimoto. Actually, what happens is that Kimoto, yes, ends up going to the art school anyways and face to face with the murderer, but a passing Fujino ends up saving her. They talk a bit and Fujino reveals that she's actually starting a new manga and she invites Kimoto to be her assistant. Kimoto goes home and she draws a four coma in the style of Fujino called Look Back. Recalling the early events, and a gust of wind sends a four coma under the door and it comes out to our reality and to our Fujino. And it's a really weird part, right? Of course, we are used to weirdness from Fujimoto, but I think the difference is that the rest of the manga is very realistic. It's not a fire punch, and it's not a chainsaw man. And there's always the approach of this not being real. And upon my first read, since we do get symbolic interactions between the two timelines, I took it as face value as two realities that just existed. But on my rereads, I'm starting to think that it's more of a coping mechanism of Fujino to create this ideal world where it's not really her that leads Kimoto to the path that leads through death, and on top of that, she is also saving her. Both interpretations are valid, I think, but I'm definitely leaning more and more to second one now. Then we get to the climax of the story. Fujino enters the room and reminds herself of her time with Kimoto, and one moment in particular when she was saying that she didn't like drawing manga, and Kimoto asks her, then why do you draw? And Fujino doesn't really answer, or if she does, it cuts before it. But what follows are scenes from when the two of them were together, laughing, writing, reading, and it's those memories that make Fujino go back to her room and start drawing again. And yeah, let's answer that. Why did she go back to drawing? And of course the obvious answer is because of Kyomoto. She was a fan of Fujino's works, she was always what fueled Fujino to continue working hard, and even though she is gone, it's Kyomoto's passion for Fujino and Fujino's passion for Kyomoto that drives her back to manga. 
but let's move a bit away from the actual manga and look back at everything and answer why did Fujimoto draw this specific manga or one shot when he did it. And I think a lot of people will say that this is a tribute to Kiwani and well, yes, everything aligns and yes, it most definitely is a tribute to that event. I don't think that's the main reason for the manga. All in all, the parts that relate to the incident make up probably not even a fourth of the entire thing. Rather, I think this is Fujimoto looking back at his career. This is Fujimoto after having written Fire Punch, a pretty successful manga in its own right, but then it just did Chainsaw Man. And that is, right now, one of the most odd manga around. It's super popular, everyone's talking about it, and we know this, this isn't even the peak. We still have part 2 to come, and still have the anime adaptation. Chainsaw Man is gonna explode soon. This, right now, is the best time for Fujimoto to not just jump into part 2, but instead to take a moment, look back, and question himself, why does he draw? And I think it's that reflection on why he does it that is Look Back. But I don't think Look Back is, however, is simply Fujimoto's story. I know it's easy to look at the names and make that connection, and I think there might be some elements that are true, but I don't think it is as close as saying like Fujimoto wants to draw because a friend of him died and he wants to honor him or something. Rather, I think Kiyomoto represents the fans. The ones that love Fujimoto's works and let him know. The ones that follow and eagerly await each and every chapter he writes. Those that were changed by his works. Chainsaw Man and Fire Punch and now Look Back. These works resonated with me in ways I never expected them to. And they are definitely some of the most important manga I've read in the past few years. And Fujimoto helped me change the way I look at media. It's different, it's wild, and it's meaningful. There is value to Fujimoto's works, and that value is recognized by the fans. A lot of my favorite manga, a lot of the manga that changed my life, that impacted it, a lot of them are not manga that we expect to be that valuable. Beelzebub, Gravity Boys, and Lavina. And maybe you think my connection to these manga are stupid, but I don't care. These manga have value. Just like Fujino's stupid four coma gags add immense value to Kyomoto. I think it's because of us that Fujimoto and a lot of other creators, not just mangaka, do it. Storytelling is such a powerful tool to impact people's lives in positive ways, and we're not all barking Makima fans. And yeah, Look Back is beautiful. I know a lot of people won't see the wildness and weirdness of Fujimoto in this one shot. It's far more realistic and grounded, and to be fair, Fujimoto has a lot of one shots that are all like that. This reminds me of Imoto Noane, the one shot that Fujimoto drew between Fire Punch and Chainsaw Man, since it's also more grounded and talks about the value of art as well. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments what is your opinion of Look Back. And if you want to see me tackle another Fujimoto's work, click on the video on the left to see me talk about Chainsaw Man and how it fits the three shonen principles. And if you watch it all here, thank you very much. And I'll see you next video.